Hola amigos, it's Ryan from Sports Science Collective and today I'm reviewing a paper titled A High Intensity Interval Training, HIIT, Based Running Plan Improves Athletic Performance by Improving Muscular Power. So a bit of background, well high intensity interval training refers to repeated bouts of high intensity exercise performed close to 100% maximal oxygen uptake or VO2 max interspersed with several recovery periods. So when we talk about VO2 max, we're talking about um, the maximal amount of oxygen that your body can um, uptake and use during severe exercise. So HIIT is considered one of the most effective forms of exercise for improving physical performance of athletes, uh, and a lot of literature um, validates those claims. Despite the profound performance improvements, the reasons that underpin that are not necessarily known. Um, but uh, lots of researchers reason that the improvements are likely due to the increased ability of skeletal muscle to buffer hydrogen ions, an increased anaerobic capacity, and an increased motor unit activation. So why might those things occur? Well, um, it's important to take a little bit of a look at the physiology um, to understand that. So first I want to draw your attention to um, this chart here. Oh, let's go back one. Um, so over here, which we're talking about the lactate threshold. So the lactate threshold refers to a point where, where running speed increases. So too does blood lactate linearly. And then it comes to a point where it just ramps up exponentially here, okay? Um, so there's a point which we pass in which our body can no longer clear blood lactate. Why does that occur? Well, to understand that, we need to look a bit at this chart here, which discusses the ventilatory threshold. Um, and the ventilatory threshold refers to, again, a break point away from a linear line. But in this instance, it's about um, ventilation of carbon dioxide, so how much carbon dioxide we're breathing in and out. Um, against um, ventilation of oxygen, so VO2 against VCO2. And you can see again this linear increase through here and then an exponential rise in that up here. Why is that occurring? Well, there comes a point with increasing intensity where the body can no longer burn fats. Um, and during this we must burn carbohydrates and that's very costly metabolically. By doing this, we tend to recruit more type 2 fast switch fibers. Um, those fibers are not good aerobically. So what happens is we have all of these increases in metabolic byproducts. So um, an increase in lactic acid, in um, pyruvic acid, in hydrogen ions, um, lots of nasty things that tend to um, increase the acidity of the blood or lower the pH. Um, and that interferes muscle contraction greatly, um, as well as many, many other biological processes. So to counter that, the body dumps a whole heap of sodium bicarbonate, which is a base, um, back into the blood. And to get rid of that base, um, we try and exhale that as carbon dioxide. So this is this VE of VCO2. So you can see right here, there is a break point of VO2 versus VCO2. So this is again referring to that point where we're exhaling too much carbon dioxide, um, which aligns really, really closely with this lactate threshold over here. So by exercising um, at those intensities, we actually um, improve our ability at um, buffering those um, acidic byproducts um, and also at, at clearing those, so getting better at um, getting rid of those. And we recruit um, fast twitch or type 2 muscle fibers. So there are all of the um, benefits using that HIIT. Um, yet despite the apparent and convincing evidence, most athletes continue to train at low intensities. Um, and kind of oddly, um, even though there has been lots of previous literature on this, um, all of the studies on HIIT have been performed on single sports. So, of course, the aim of this study was to determine the effects of a five-week high intensity interval training based running plan on the performance of triathletes and to compare physiological and neuromuscular responses before and after the training period. 
So the study involved 13 male triathletes aged 24 to 42 at 74 kilos and 176 centimetres tall. Um, the design was a parallel two group, so a control group and an experimental longitudinal design, uh, which included physical tests before and after the five week training period. Measures. So before anything happened, the experimental group um, established their velocity at VO2 max, so how fast they can run at VO2 max, and that was used to prescribe training intensities at or above that um, velocity. All other measures were performed before or after, so pre-test or post-test, post -test, a simulated sprint distance triathlon with 750-metre swim in a 25-metre metre pool, um, a 20-kilometre ride on an ergo using the participant's bike, and a 5-kilometre run on a 400-metre aftershock. In both occasions following the warm-up, participants performed a counter-movement jump, so a jump up and down, a squat jump, which is this picture here where the person... Um, crouches down and holds and then explodes up. Um, and these were used as baseline measurements. Why? Well, because they're indicative of neuromuscular fatigue. So a decrease in jump usually indicates neuromuscular fatigue. Um, as well as that, overall race times in individual segment times, so bike, swim, run, uh, were recorded as well as RPE values and post-race blood lactates. What did the participants do in the experimental group? Well, the tri first of all, the triathletes in the control group didn't change their training at all, um, but the participants in the experimental group did. So they changed their running. They didn't change their cycling or swim training, but they greatly increased the intensity at which they ran at. So you can see um, using this protocol or this training um, table here taken um, from or adapted from the study um, that there was a lot of time spent um, doing interval style training, so 100 metre efforts, 400 metre runs, 120 second runs, 30 second all out sprints um, at or above intensities of VO2 max. Some of these efforts uh, were increased linearly as you can see here, um, other ones were introduced um, later into the protocol. But the important thing to take away here is that the program actually increased the intensity greatly, um, but weekly volume, so distance incre decreased nearly 70%. Um, so f they went from 33.6 down to 10 kilometres per week during the training intervention. What happened? Well, the control group had no changes in anything, so no significant changes in any jumps um, or any of the individual legs or overall times. But the experimental group had a 2% decrease in swimming time, so obviously timed events decreases are better because it means they're faster, uh, and running time. So running and swimming were both faster, those legs, cycling didn't change. Um, but they also had an improvement in counter movement jump of 9.2% and an improvement in static jump of 5.9%. And all of these improvements were statistically significant. So another really interesting part to this is that the regression equation that they used, um, so an equation that informs us um, a bit about how things interact, revealed that the change in counter movement jumps and the improvement in counter movement jumps actually predicted the change in running time and overall performance. So what does that mean? Well, that it is likely that HIIT protocol led to um, those recruitments of fast twitch fibers I spoke about earlier, which improved muscle activation, so improved neuromuscular um, activation, which actually decreased the swimming time and running time um, and overall times, which led to the improvement um, in the triathlete's performance. So what to take away from this? Well, the presence of high uh, intensity interval training in an endurance athletes program has been shown many times before um, to improve lots of performance variables such as those mentioned above. Likewise, the importance of high volume training has been long established. Um, therefore, both types of those trainings should be combined. Here are the references if you would like a look at them. Uh, alternatively, if you want to know any more about this, feel free to get in touch with us um, on our website or over Facebook Messenger. Thanks for watching.